uh, there was a political bombshell, you can say, um, that took place yesterday in Israel. There was a deadline uh, yesterday in Israel for any groups that are running for, or parties that are running for election in Israel's parliamentary elections, um, which are coming up uh, on April 9th. So in just a little over a month, uh, Israel will have their elections. As we would have our presidential elections, they have uh, a parliamentary election for essentially who's going to be the ruling uh, governmental party and who will be the prime minister of Israel. So I'm going to go through this just briefly and then I'll give you some of the ramifications of what took place yesterday in Israel just before the deadline when they had to submit this information. So currently, as you know, uh, the prime minister of Israel, and he's been prime minister for many years now and uh, multiple terms. Uh, in office, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, he's known as Bibi, uh, if you hear him being referred to in the news media, uh, Bibi or Benjamin Netanyahu, and he is with the, he's the leader of the Likud party in Israel. Now Israel has lots of political parties. We think we have trouble with two, um, and once in a while we have an independent thrown into the mix, uh, but Israel has multiple, multiple parties, and uh, some of them, uh, form coalitions, or what they call a joint list, and uh, to, to amass more power and to get more votes. Now Israel, in their parliamentary system, they have um, 120 total seats in parliament. So these political parties vie for seats, and whoever, whichever party has, can cobble together the most seats in parliament, essentially is the ruling party. And an individual from that party will be the prime minister uh, of the country. So Benjamin Netanyahu has had to fend off several attempts through the years for other parties that have emerged, and it seems like there's a new one that emerges you know, every few months in Israel, and they give themselves new names, um, but he has managed to maintain power. The Likud party is really one of the, is the major conservative party uh, in Israel. Um, then they have a religious party, they have more than one, but a religious party, that the, the most well-known one is called Shas, S-H-A-S, that's the Orthodox religious party in Israel. So the Orthodox Jews that you see, most of them would be part of the Shas party. And the Orthodox wield a significant, um, significant amount of, of influence in Israel. And normally, when the rubber meets the road and the parties have to coalesce to, to maintain power, normally the ultra-Orthodox party, Shas, partners with the conservative party, Likud, which Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is prime minister over of the whole country, the leader of that party. What that does, however, is that it makes any particular leader, whoever is the ruling leader or prime minister at the time, has to acquiesce to factions within his party or out to another party that works with him to maintain enough seats in parliament so he doesn't lose his power as prime minister. Okay? So right now, Benjamin Netanyahu is prime minister with the Likud party. Now, what happened yesterday is two centrist parties with challengers, these are uh, probably next in line in terms of the parties that have the most political power. One is the leader is Benny Gantz, and he is the former chief of staff of the Israel Defense Forces, of the IDF. Okay, so he, about three years ago, uh, finished his, uh, his term as chief of staff for the IDF. Uh, so he has a lot of experience, uh, particularly as it relates to military experience. And then the other individual, Yair Lapid, and he is head of the Yesh Atid party. And uh, Yesh Atid really means we have a future, or there is a future. That's the idea of Yesh Atid party. These two centrists, by the way, Yair Lapid was the Ministry of Finance for Israel most recently for a few years, and before that he was a news journalist in Israel. Okay? So these two individuals, Benny Gantz and Yair Lapid, both had significant um, followings in the center, you could say the political center of Israel. And a lot of people said, look, in the upcoming elections, and by the way, Netanyahu Prime Minister Netanyahu called for early elections. There was a, a, about a month or two ago, there were some other issues 
and he had to fend off a challenge, and then he called for early elections. And believe it or not, even though he was dealing with those challenges politically, most people up until yesterday thought that he was a shoe in to win in the April 9th election for Prime Minister of Israel. However, right before the deadline, these two other centrist parties that really by themselves would not pose a challenge to him, but together they pose a significant challenge potentially to him. So Benny Gantz and Yair Lapid. They formed a new party, they announced it this morning in the news media, called the Blue and White Party. And blue and white is simply the colors of Israel and the colors of Israel's flag, blue and white. So they would form a centrist government. So they are going to pose a formidable challenge to Prime Minister Netanyahu in his reelection on April 9th. So the two, blue and white party, together, led by Gantz and Lapid, the if based on polls that are being taken right now in Israel, the most recent poll asked people if they were to, because there was this buzz in the air that they may get together, the polls indicate that they would probably pull in about 32 seats in parliament. And Netanyahu in the Likud party, 31 seats. So that's where we're at. Uh, right now, and this has created a, as I said, a political bombshell in Israel. Uh, it's all over the news media over there. And why do I tell you all this? Why should you care about what's going on with the prime ministership of Israel and the leadership? Because there is so much politically that is going on in Israel and the Middle East. And America is involved, and the Arab countries are involved. Russia is interested in what takes place. Europe is concerned about what's taking place. A few weeks ago, I told you about a new pipeline that was announced uh, between Israel and the European Union um, that would not involve any Arab Muslim nations, which is very significant to pipe Israel's natural gas to Europe without any Arab Muslim nations being involved in that mix. That could potentially be in jeopardy with the new Israeli government um, that is more centrist and some say will lean liberal uh, in terms of some of their policies. No one knows what a new Israeli government would do in terms of their defense and their security. Um, will they want to work with the Arab community, with the Palestinians? Will they give away land uh, to the Palestinians in exchange for a so-called peace? So there are all kinds of questions. But the biggest issue is that our president, Donald Trump, and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and an associate, Jason Greenblatt, in our United States government, are all, have all been working very closely with Prime Minister Netanyahu over the past several years, and the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia, to bring together what Donald Trump calls the deal of the century, a plan for Palestinian and Israeli peace that would they, he hopes would solve the problems of the Palestinian-Israeli situation and conflict that has been going on for many years in the Middle East. What is happening now is that peace plan has been held back, and according to sources that we're seeing, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, please don't release details of the peace plan, Donald Trump's peace plan, until after I am reelected on April 9th. Why? Because he has to satisfy so many political factions within the Israeli government that some, even though they're with him now, may say, oh, we don't really like elements of the peace plan proposal. We don't like this component, or we have a problem with this component. So rather than muddy the waters for himself, Prime Minister Netanyahu said to President Trump, please don't release the plan until after I'm reelected on April 9th. And Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has been holding on to power uh, in Saudi Arabia, remember there was a big issue with the Khashoggi murder in Istanbul and Turkey was trying to pin that on the crown prince himself of Saudi Arabia to discredit him and to potentially maybe make him uh, fall from power in Saudi Arabia. So all of these issues play together and in order for this peace plan, we don't know what's in it, we don't know what it's going to be proposing, but it is significant, and it will be significant for the entire world. And of course, those of us who are interested in Bible prophecy, and I hope all of you are, and the return of Jesus Christ, all of this is very significant as it relates to what is going to be taking place in Israel. Will there be a peace plan? Will it have longevity? Will it be a forerunner or a foreshadowing of what will be coming in the future as it relates to the rise of the Antichrist and an ultimate peace plan? 
that the Bible talks about. So I just wanted you to be aware of these issues and what's taking place in Israel. Um, we're not, I can't say that we're rooting for a particular side because again, we don't know um, all the issues that are, that are in play. I will tell you that Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu is under investigation for uh, a lot of issues. Of course, we have a government where we have a lot of accusations going around in our country about our leaders uh, and accusa accusations and talks of impeachment and indictments and all of those kind of things. Um, there, there is uh, a potential for Prime Minister Netanyahu to be indicted for some of these issues. And that is politically in play as well over there uh, too. So we want to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We want to uh, be praying for Israel. Of course, that God's will will be done. We have many friends uh, over there and uh, uh, acquaintances and those ministries that we partner with. So of course, we want to be praying. It's a very precarious time in Israel as they are surrounded on three sides the Golan Heights and Syria uh, with Iran and what Iran is doing militarily in, in, in uh, Syria on Israel's northern border. And then of course, Iran's proxy Hezbollah, which is based, a terror group based in Lebanon, just to the north of Israel. And then of course, Hamas in Gaza to the southwest of Israel. So it's a very difficult time, a challenging time. A lot of people in Israel have a lot of angst uh, over this, what's going to happen, what's going to develop. So I want you to be informed so that you can be sharing this with others and you can be praying for Israel. Go deeper in your understanding of God, His people, and His plan for planet Earth. Zion's Fire magazine is an exceptional resource with powerful insights from Scripture that provide a clear understanding of God's ultimate plan for the last days and the return of Jesus Christ. As a first-time subscriber, you'll receive a free one-year subscription to Zion's Fire magazine with no strings attached. Request your free subscription by visiting our website or by calling our toll-free number and we'll send you six free issues, one every other month, for a full year. We depend on the generosity of viewers like you to support the ongoing production of these programs. Your donation, whether large or small, is greatly appreciated. Donations may be given online at www.zionshope.org or by calling us toll-free at 1-888-781-9466. Stay informed and see the latest from Zion's Hope by liking us on Facebook, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and following us on Twitter.